Welcome back to our channel. Please like and subscribe. We want you here. We appreciate it. What we're going to do today, we're going to talk about this car. This is an Onward HP from Club Car. It comes from the factory with a lithium battery, factory AC drive, AC motor, AC controller. It runs 19 miles per hour and it pulls like crazy until it gets to 19 miles per hour. It's got so much more capability of running a higher speed, but it's programmed for 19 miles per hour and not a single bit more than that. We have high speed gears we can put in these cars. It'll make them faster. A lot of times it makes them too fast. Um, it's not really a good option for those who live in the mountains or in a hilly terrain or people who haul a lot of people on these cars. The only time we like to recommend you put high speed gears in an Onward HP is if you live on the beach or exclusively flat terrain and you're not driving at long distances to allow the controller to get hot. So that's not an option for a lot of people. There's nothing simple that we can do to these cars to speed them up, unfortunately. But this particular car right here, we've converted it back to a DC onward that was not a lithium car. It was not a factory AC car from the factory as far as the wiring is concerned. So we've put the old style wiring harnesses in a newer car so we can use aftermarket components. This particular car has an eco battery, 70 volt lithium battery, and a Navitas five kilowatt 600 amp controller AC drive system in it. And this car will now run 40 plus miles per hour, even with these 28 inch tires on it. So it would have never done that before when it was an onward HP with the factory AC drive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the kit that we put on this car and show you exactly what it does and how it works. This is the new main harness. This is the harness from like I said, it's from a DC powered onward. Um, it's also the same harness that's on a Tempo or a Precedent. This is 16 pin connector. It's gonna plug right into that Navitas AC controller or the Alltrax AC1. The data port right here, you're no longer gonna need because this is for the original Curtis controller that would have gone with this harness. You've got this little blue wire right here. That's the charger data communication and interlock wire for the Eric charger. It's not gonna be used. And here you've got a series of wires. These little blue wires right here, these are the solenoid activation wires. If you look at them closely, you notice one has a red terminal, one has a black terminal. This one's positive, this one's negative. This is a light blue wire on the positive and a dark blue wire with a white stripe on the negative. This is extremely important to make sure that you hook these up on your solenoid correctly. And depending on which solenoid you have, you may have to clip these off and put ring terminals on them because some solenoids have different types of terminals for their activation wires. And you'll see that in one of our other videos about solenoids. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but you need to go check that out. This wire right here, this is the main power cable for the wire harness. This is what provides power to the wire harness. We're gonna clip this off, put a ring terminal on it and put it directly on the battery terminal on the solenoid on the same large post that comes from the main positive battery terminal. So it will always draw a constant positive from the battery. And then these two right here, they just plug into your run tow switch. It doesn't matter which way they go. You can invert these either way. It's just an on off switch. It doesn't matter. This is the DC speed sensor. If you're running an AC motor and controller, you won't use this. A little further down, these three wires plug into the forward reverse switch. It's gonna be blue orange, brown, starting from the driver's side of the switch, working towards the passenger side of the switch. If you put the switch in and the car runs backwards, when you put it in forward and forward, when you put it in reverse, swap the two outer wires, it'll fix your problem. These two wires right here, plug into your M core four. This, this kit is available for an apps throttle. So if you're onward has the apps throttle sensor on it, we can do that as well. Um, these two connectors plug into the M core four, but if you have the, the apps throttle, it would be found on every car from week 21 of the 22 model year and newer. Everything prior would be an M core four like these two plugs. And then a little bit further down, this little plug right here is for club cars visage system. That was the GPS system and food ordering system on the golf car that was on the golf course. So unless you're using your car for golf and you have a Visage system on it, you won't use this plug. This little gray wire right here, that's the trigger wire 
for the brake light relay and the voltage reducer for your light kit. Your light harness will have a matching connector that plugs into this, and we'll get to that in a minute. And then this nine pin connector right here plugs directly into what we call the IP harness that goes behind the dash. And that's uh, IP stands for instrument panel. And we're gonna go over that harness now. So here we have the IP harness. You've got a nine pin connector on the end that plugs into the main harness. You got a pink and an orange right here that go to the reverse buzzer. Pink goes to the positive and orange goes to the negative. This orange actually has a white stripe on it as well. This is your factory data port if you're running a Curtis factory DC controller on this car. These wires right here, the yellow and green and the black plug into the factory orange battery condition light, the little light that turns on and off when the car needs to be charged. If you're not running a factory controller, don't worry about these, they're not gonna work anyway. These two right here go to a battery condition gauge, the little bar meter that was optional, on the onward that shows you what your battery state of charge is. It's a red wire and a black wire with a yellow stripe. And a lot of people may see that as pink. It looks red to me, so I call it red. And then these two wires right here, they go to the key switch. The green carries the power to the key switch and the blue carries the power out of the key switch when the key switch is turned on. Okay, now we're gonna go over the light harness. That's the light harness for a club car onward, non-HP. This is what we're gonna have to put on this car now that we're converting the main harness to a non-HP harness. We're not gonna run the body control module anymore, which the light harness plugged into. So there's a lot of things on that car that are no longer gonna be there. So that's the reason we have to change this harness. This is the plug that plugs into your IP harness, not the IP harness I just showed you, but the IP harness that works for your lights. So that's another separate harness that's part of this kit that we'll go over that one next. These two wires right here plug into the factory voltage reducer for your light kit. If you're not using a factory voltage reducer, you can cut these plugs off and integrate your aftermarket reducer into these wires. And we've got some documentation that comes with this kit that tells you which wires go to what. Really easy to follow. This little gray wire right here is the wire that we were talking about earlier that triggers the brake light relay and the voltage reducer to turn on and off with the key. This is gonna plug into the gray wire with the matching connector on the main harness. I'm gonna go a little further down. This is your brake light wiring. If you've got a brake light switch on the car and the instructions that come with your particular brake light switch will tell you which of, three, which of these three wires go where. It varies based on different switches. So I'm not gonna elaborate on that because it could vary a lot. This blue wire right here is the hot wire for the harness for your light kit. So you're gonna hook that directly to your main positive battery terminal because you're using a 48 volt to 12 volt reducer on those pigtails we talked about previously at the other end of the harness. This is the negative for the light harness. It's gonna to go to the battery negative. And then we've got these two pigtails to plug in to your tail lights. You got a black with a white stripe on both of them. You got a yellow on this one and a white on this one. And you got a brown on both of them. So the one with the white wire in the center is gonna go on the driver's side. The one with the yellow wire in the center is gonna go on the passenger side. They plug directly into your factory tail lights. So you can keep the same tail lights that was already on the car. You don't need new ones. And okay, now we're gonna go over the IP lighting harness. Starting at the end right here, this plugs into your turn signal switch or horn button, one or, the, one or the other. The yellow and blue plug into your headlight switch. This is an optional pigtail that can plug into a factory installed accessory. And this connector will match the connector that was on your Onward HP. So if there's an accessory on your Onward HP that was plugged into a connector that looks like this, you can plug it into this one and it'll still work the same way. This is this goes for cert, you know, certain accessories like sound bars and stuff like that. And a little further, we've got these four wires right here. You got an orange and a blue with a white stripe. And then you've got this pink wire and this green wire. So what this is, is these four wires plug into a 48 volt relay that turns on and off with the key that keeps the brake lights from staying on if the brake light switch ever gets stuck. So this gives you the ability to, cu to cut your brake lights off if they ever get stuck. So 
because we use a triggered voltage reducer that cuts the light circuit completely off with the key anyways, we don't need this relay. So typically what we would do is we would take these two wires right here, the orange and the blue, and tape these two connectors up with some electrical tape so they don't touch anything, and then tape them out of the way, and then cut these two connectors off the green and the either pink or red, whatever you want to call it here, and connect them together. That will essentially bypass that relay as if it wasn't even there. And it'll work like it's supposed to if you've got a keyed voltage reducer. So we don't need to worry about those. And like this is where the harness plugs into the end of the lighting harness that runs down, down the floorboard and back to your battery. The one we just talked about. This is another optional accessory plug that you may or may not have on your car. And then you get a little further down. This is a headlight wire. It plugs into the pigtail that comes off of the headlight. And then this is the other headlight with the orange and black wire that plug into your horn. This little short one's gonna go to the passenger side and the longer one's gonna go to the driver's side headlight. And then the only other thing left that these two these two fuse blocks right here this is the fuses for your light harness and they just pop off right here and you got the little mini fuses in here i like to tuck these back behind the dash to where they're you know fairly easy to access in case we ever need to service the the fuse blocks i hope i was able to answer some questions for you so once these harnesses are all installed in the car it should function like it came that way from the factory a non-HP club car onward that is now upgradable to anything that's compatible with the IQ drive system. You've got Alltrax XCT, Navitas TSX DC controllers. You've got factory Curtis controllers. You've got Navitas AC drive, Alltrax AC1. You've got several different systems here. The uh, Silverwolf Tcon AC system also works on the IQ system from club car. So essentially what this does is it provides you something that you can build off of. You can use any battery you want. You can use any of those controllers that I just mentioned, which gives you much more as far as options than the Onward HP. One thing you need to be aware of on the Onward HP is the rear differential actually has a different drive ratio in it than the standard golf car. So if you're running a kit like the Navitas AC kit, you need to make sure in your app where it asks you what your rear factory gear ratio is, you put 14.85. And this is going to reduce your speed by a few miles an hour, but it's going to increase the torque. We, we left the 14.85 differential in this car specifically because of these oversized tires that we're running. It pulls them very well with those gears in it. Um, a lot of cars that don't have these big tires, we put a regular 12.3 golf car transaxle in it to get the speed back up where it's supposed to be. But with these tires and those gears, it's great. It runs, like I said before, it runs 40 plus miles per hour with that 70 volt eco in it. So we couldn't be happier. Hopefully this was able to answer some questions for you. Let us know if you've got any questions. We're glad to help.